on October 6, the findings of an independent inquiry into all the child sexual abuse that occurred within the Church of England was released. And uh, it's not all good, as you'd suspect from an inquiry into child sexual abuse. Welcome back to Bible Bears, everyone. I'm Ryder Cullison. Okay, so there is a report out. It's 120 pages long. There was an independent inquiry into child sexual abuse within the Church of England and the Church in Wales. Okay, so before we get into this, don't forget to hit subscribe so that you will be alerted when I post new videos. Woo! Okay, real quick. The Church of England is the largest denomination in the country. They have over a million regular worshipers. There's at least 100,000 children that participate in church-related activities such as the nursery and youth clubs and, and other religious activities. Things that happen at all churches, okay? The summation of this report, and I will include a link to the full report in the details section, but let me just tell you what they said. I'm going to read word for word here. The church's neglect of the physical, emotional, and spiritual well-being of children and young people in favor of protecting its reputation was in conflict with its mission of love and care for the innocent and vulnerable. The church decided to protect its reputation rather than the innocent and vulnerable. All the innocent and vulnerable children. How many innocent and vulnerable children? Well, let me read you this. Convictions of sexual abuse of children by people who were clergy or in positions of trust associated with the church date back to the 1940s. That's, when we say date back to the 1940s, that basically implies that's when they started keeping records of it. This has obviously been going on for centuries in churches. Listen, I'm a Christian. I don't have any problem calling out people in churches. If, as a Christian... I'm not calling out the abuse in our churches. I do not in any way establish trust with non-believers. If I'm trying to cover it up, I'm just as guilty as these bishops and clergymen. We must bring this into the light of day. Secondly, these people that are in these positions of power, they're, they're power hungry, they're trying to get away with abuses, and they already have a sexual persuasion for children. That's why they involve themselves in positions of power like this. They intentionally put themselves in positions where they have access to children. They're not Christians. They may be plain Christians, but they aren't. Christians don't prey on children. Now, I'm not saying Christians are perfect in any way, okay? The total number of convicted offenders associated with the church from the 40s until 2018 is 390. That's how many people have been convicted of sex offenses against children. Actual molestation may not have been involved, but some form of pedophilia, whether it's viewing pornography, very well could have been. In 2018, 449 concerns were reported to the church about recent child sexual abuse, of which more than half were related to church officers. Okay, so we're not off to a good start here. I mean, 2018, 449 concerns were reported. Now, to be fair, I'm not defending anybody, but to be fair, I'm sure some of those reports weren't all of priests or bishops molesting children. Some may be unfounded, but, but, I want to point out something that I read once, and this is very key. Children, especially young children, four, five, six, children who are raised in healthy homes, children who, are not, who have not been abused, if they present an accusation of this sort where they have been sexually abused by somebody, the odds are overwhelmingly that they are telling the truth. And the reason is because in their innocent minds, they cannot fabricate such an accusation. The idea of being molested by an adult, any adult, much less an adult that they trust, is not something that has even entered their imagination yet because they're too young. So if they produce 
such a uh, an accusation, such a claim, odds are they're telling the truth. Now, what's disturbing is there are examples of clergy being ordained despite a past history of sexual abuse. I don't know how often they do background checks. I used to be president of a local Little League in my county. I perform background checks on our volunteers every year. Coaches, umpires, board members, every year. Anyone that I could saw on the field, we try to get a background check form to them. We performed a background check under no circumstances whatsoever were we ever permitted to put on the field a volunteer who had committed uh, any type of offense against a child, any type of sexual offense against a child. Here's why so many egregious acts have been committed against children or why so many of these clergymen were able to get away with what they were doing. The culture of the Church of England facilitated it becoming a place where abusers could hide. How so? Well, there was deference to the authority of the church and to individual priests. For instance, there was a priest accused of molesting children, and basically they said, oh, there's no way, he's too old, he's too frail. There's other reasons, taboos surrounding discussion of sexuality. Um, there was also an environment where alleged perpetrators were treated more supportively than victims. Well, and we get that, don't we? We've all been in positions where we've worked alongside of, let's say, other volunteers. And this volunteer is a happy, cheery person. This volunteer helps you carry things to your car. This volunteer gives money to the church every week. This volunteer helps feed the homeless. This volunteer you see reading your Bible or leading prayer discussions. This volunteer tells jokes and warms up the room and just makes everybody feel at peace. There's no way that volunteer is at home downloading thousands of pornographic images. And yet, when we discover it, we can't believe it. Surely, surely this can't be true. Look at all this volunteer does for the community. And that's a huge misconception. The misconception this idea that child molesters are somehow pimply-faced, greasy-haired, unkempt perverts with Hustler magazines sticking out of their back pockets. That's simply not the case. They look like everybody else. And they're masters. They're chameleons. How do you think they get access to your children? By acting like creeps? By greeting you at the water cooler and salivating over how good cuties is? No. They do all the things that I'd already told you about. They help out. They give. They're warm and friendly and caring and nurturing. This is how they get you to bring your defenses down. Now, they, these priests and bishops and clergymen also cover for each other. There was one reverend who was caught having downloaded 8,000 images of minors. And another uh, bishop kind of guffawed. <laughs> Well, pornography is so accessible over the internet, he must have just been misled into doing that. 8,000 images? Really? You just accidentally downloaded 8,000 images? Now, the report shows until as of at least 2015, the Church of England did not properly resource safeguarding. So, everybody was really short shorthanded. Um, there were inadequate records kept. People had trouble following up on reports of allegation. They were just short-handed. Uh, since then, funding has increased considerably for the safeguarding staff. More people have been added. That's all good, but they are still falling short in some areas. For instance, diocesan bishops hold ultimate responsibility for safeguarding within the diocese. There's a problem right there because these bishops may feel compelled to cover for their friend. There's no way Bob downloaded all that family guy pornography. Now the independent inquiry provided recommendations of what the church should do going forward to safeguard their adults, their children from allegations. Because listen, 
It's important we need to safeguard adults too. For instance, at my church, I go to a very big church. It's not a mega church, but it's, it's particularly big. Men are not allowed in the bathroom with the children at all, at any time. I'm totally cool with that, as you could probably guess. But that keeps us safeguarded from any allegations that may be brought against us. Men are not allowed in any circumstances in the nursery. The nursery is newborns, one and two year olds. No circumstances are we allowed in there. Now, I teach kindy, uh, preschool, excuse me, I teach three, four, and five year olds, and no time is any volunteer in my class allowed to be in the classroom alone with children. So we always have at least two volunteers in there at a time. Now if my volunteers need to leave the room to take children to the bathroom, we also have hall monitors that can step in. We also carry walkie-talkies. So we put these measures in place not just to safeguard the children, but to safeguard the adults. Now here are the recommendations. The church needs to reintroduce a rule to expel any member of the clergy found guilty of child sexual abuses. How is that not already a rule? If you're a clergyman and you're found guilty of child sexual abuse, you should not be a priest, a bishop, a clergyman, whatever titles they have anymore. You're automatically stripped of that title. It should not be a lifetime privilege that you have. Two, responsibility for safeguarding should be given to safeguarding officers not the diocesan bishops. Maybe I'm mispronouncing diocesan. Yeah, absolutely. You need to have independent safeguarding officers, not the bishops scratching each other's back. Three, the Church of England and Wales should share information about clergy who move between institutions. That makes perfect sense. It's like the FBI and the local police forces sharing information about the movements of serial killers putting it all into one database, like VICAP, the Violent Criminal Apprehension Program, where everybody can say, hey, wait a second, I got this type of murder or this type of assault here. It matches the type of murder and assault that occurred three states away. Maybe there's a connection. Well, yeah, if one creep leaves your church, maybe you should make the others aware of why he was discharged. Maybe he wasn't found guilty of something, but maybe he, you suspected him of doing something inappropriate. You let him go. You don't want him finding a job at another church where he can prey upon children. Makes perfect sense. Great recommendation. Lastly, introduce policies for funding and support of survivors of child sexual abuse whose perpetrator had a connection to the church. Look, the church just needs to do a better job of following up with these accusers and of those people where the perpetrator is actually found guilty, follow up the victims. Show them that you love them. Not, that, I mean, they're dealing with a lot of guilt and shame. Don't ridicule them. Don't make them feel less than they are. Too bad Phil the priest uh, got caught fondling 12 boys. And there's lots of instances in this report of things like that. But you know what? One of those boys, or all of those boys have the right to feel angry and hurt and they're going to leave Christianity. We don't want that to happen. You need to reach out. You need to love on them. Get rid of Phil. Strip him of his title. Let these people know that you care. Lastly, I want to address the fact that some people suggest, hey, if you let some of these people have intimate relationships with women, then there wouldn't be a problem. Wrong. If that was the problem, then these people would just be having intimate relationships with other women. They would be breaking their vows by being intimate with women. No. They have a proclivity towards young children, young girls and boys. Being with a woman isn't going to destroy the urges they have for young children. So put that out of your head. Guys, what do you think of this report? What can the church do better? What can our churches in the U.S. that uh, these mega churches or the Catholic churches or whatever, what can they do better to protect children? Put those in the comments below. I'd love to hear from you. If you have a story, if you're, listen, 
If you're a past survivor of sexual abuse, I am praying for you. If you want to share your story in the comments below, we'd love to hear from you. I encourage everybody to be caring and compassionate to anybody who does that. Uh, regardless of whether you have left the faith, I encourage you to come back. But even if you haven't, I am praying for you. I love you. My bears love you. Guys, thank you for watching. Give me a thumbs up, share, and subscribe. As always, have a blessed day.